Hello everyone, Reza here. Welcome to another Substance video. In this one, I'm going to take a request from one of my Patreon members, how to create glass inside Adobe Substance 3D Stager. It's going to be an exciting one. Let's get started. Here I am inside Adobe Substance Painter where I painted the base of my model. Uh, I've got three texture sets, the base, and I've already textured that. I've got uh, the bubbles and they're inside this glassy object and I've got a cylinder and I would like to apply glass to this as well. Now, I, in another video, I talked about how to enable opacity and bring the opacity channel into Adobe Substance Painter. But the whole idea is to add more than that, add a little bit of reflection, the light bending process. So all the bubbles inside the glass get a little bit of distortion. And these are the things that you should either do in uh, other software packages like Maya or Blender, or you can bring the whole thing into Adobe Substance 3D Stager and tweak the materials and get them ready for your final presentation. And that's the whole idea behind this tutorial. Now, first things first, I need to take the whole thing and export that to Adobe Substance Stager. It's very, very easy. I already have a YouTube short for it, I believe. You go to File and go to Send To and Send To Substance 3D Stager. And just like that, we export everything, all the texture sets, the model, so on and so forth, straight into Substance Stager. I'm gonna click away, press F to frame. And you can see I get an environment node in the top right hand side of the user interface. Scenes roll out uh, with the name of the scene in Substance Painter. Was The name of the scene was Capsule No Glass. If I expand that we can get to all the texture sets and these texture sets have now been converted to a geometry node where you can apply material to them directly you can reposition them so on and so forth so if you have a material or if you have an object and you want to apply a specific material to that object make sure that object gets a separate texture set in adobe substance painter First phase, let's dress the set a little bit. So when we apply transmissive material to this object, we get all the right physical attributes. Starting with the environment, I'm gonna go select the environment, go into light, and that's where you can apply a different image to your environment. I'm gonna go to lights, scroll all the way down, and pick something relatively dark and dim. Uh, I can see Studio 4 gives me a, quite a, an interesting look. Because I have emissive objects, I would like those objects to stand out. Obviously, I don't want the objects to be too bright. That kind of defeats the purpose. Now, for the intensity of this light, I can just give this, I don't know, uh, 50, 50 something, 53. Let's start with that and we can just change that if need be. Then I'm gonna go to the ground where I have access to the opacity and the reflection and the roughness of the reflection in my scene. I want to have ground plane so opacity has to be set to 100% and you get a really nice tooltip actually showing what attribute does what. For um, reflection opacity I'm just going to get a little bit of reflection and of course for roughness I would like to get just a little bit of roughness as well so it's not like a mirror you place the object on the mirror that crispiness is not going to go well with the design that I have. Now that's it for the environment. Let's apply a few manual lights. So you can go 
and select the light menu and you've got a few different types of lights at your disposal. You've got a directional light, which is like a sunlight. We definitely don't want that. You get a plane of, right, uh, of light, which is called area light, and you get a cone of light, which is called spotlight. That actually looks nice. I can move this down and rotate this light ever so slightly. And you can do that via transform. That's how you rotate the light if need be. So I am going to reposition this light ever so slightly, move it up in Y axis and tweak it in Z axis. So it's kind of shining light like so. I don't want that to be too direct. Obviously, um, I've rotated it 180 degrees and 180 degrees. And um, yeah, something like that will do just a little bit of uh, angle to give it a nice looking fall off. Now you can go to the actual object light and play around with exposure. So um, at this point, exposure of 10 is a little bit too high. I can kind of tone it down. Um, intensity, uh, I do want to bring up intensity just to make up for the exposure that I just reduced. For color, I'm really unsure I'm going to start with a nice blue color but I may change that later on I'm just going to kind of take note of this and see if I can um, get a better result and I am going to increase the fall off to have smoother um, edges around so I don't know I'm gonna exaggerate let's uh, try 110 definitely a smoother fall off is what I want and I'm gonna try almost the same thing in here so increasing the, the size of the cone but reducing the sharpness of the light color around the edges is what I'm kind of aiming for now every now and then go and click on this ray tracing just to get the feel for the environment what type of environment you have so right off the bat I see that the ground plane in the environment this color is just way too bright I'm just going to tone it down a little so everything shows better so if I go in there now you can see the way that it's presented actually looks much better I don't want to constantly work within the ray tracing especially with the same machine that I'm recording it's not a good idea I need to apply another light, but this time I would like to apply it inside this canister. Now, um, I've got two objects. I've got the base, which I'm not going to change. Obviously, that has to be locked. Then I've got the bubbles and the glassy canister. Now, I can just hold down Control left mouse button to change my texture sets or uh, geometry nodes for lack of better word or you can use the scenes node I can hold down control and come on the keyboard and hide objects so I'm just going to hide that canister glass so I can get to the actual model you can see I've got these bubbles that I uh, need to texture in a second I'm tempted to just put a light in there and make the canister look slightly brighter so we might as well do that I'm gonna do that with a simple point light I don't want to um, make it too complicated I'm just going to move this up I need to figure out about the position it in a second but let's kind of figure out the colors first for the color, I'm going to go with this uh, very bright green color. And I know it looks a bit ridiculous, but bear with me. <laughs> it will get better. Uh, I will reduce the exposure for sure. The exposure is way too high. So I just want to kind of confine that. And of course, as usual, I want to reduce the um, radius a little bit. So maybe 0.8. Just a smaller light to work with is definitely better. As for the position of it, I would like to lower this. So, so something like one um, should do the trick, 1.19, just to make sure that it's all good. Now, uh, with that done, I think we're in a position to start uh, applying materials to the geometry nodes that we have. I'm just going to enable ray tracing 
to see what type of look I'm getting. Because you can see the light is not too bright. It's not too distractive. I'm not getting uh, light bleeding or light leaking happening on the ground. And so far, so good. I'm happy actually with the result. Let's go and in the next chapter, texture or apply materials rather to the, to the bubbles. All right, I'm all ready to go. I'm gonna turn off ray tracing and have a look at my bubbles node. Go into properties, pick material, and I've got a default material. You can delete this material and start working with a brand new material, or you can just tweak what you have and uh, get the result. I'm just going to actually tweak this native default material and turn it to something that I really want. So the first one is the base color. Obviously I want the base color to be the same color as the light, the point light that I just created. And that's something that I want to apply to our emissive attribute as well. I'm going to zoom in so I can see what's going on. Now I'm working my way down to roughness set to 0.3. I think it's a good number. You can lower it ever so slightly and it's um, responsible for how matte or how smooth highlights are. So everything is not too glossy. And at any point of time, if you feel like things are too glossy, you can always increase Increase that. Now I have no uh, metalness, so metallic needs to be turned off. I want to see the bubbles, obviously, so opacity needs to be on. Uh, the specular level, I'm not going to touch that. Again, all of these attributes I talked about in details in my quick start to stager, so make sure to check that out. I actually go straight into a mission and try to play around with the emission attribute because this bubble. Uh, only needs to emit light. Now I'm going to use the emission value in here. So the color that I think about is actually a little bit green on the green side. So that should give me a good result. You can definitely go over one. Um, as a matter of fact, I do. I'm going to go and start with something close to two, like 1.8 is a good starting point. At any point of time, you can always go back and change stuff. I don't need to have any sheen or secondary layer of perspective, no subsurface scattering whatsoever. And let's call this one a day. I'm going to enable ray tracing and see how this uh, um, shader or material looks. And you can see it's coming along nicely. And in the next chapter, let's tackle how we can make use of base materials inside Stager to apply glass to our objects. All right, for glass, I always start with the base material and work my way down to access base materials. You go to materials and in the base material rollout, you have different types. You have glow, matte, metal, subsurface, and also glass. Now I need to unhide the geometry and just select drag and drop either onto the model or onto the geometry node. It doesn't matter. And you instantly get a beautiful looking glass. I do need to make some changes. Again, the result that you're getting right off the bat might look good, but it's always a good starting point. And I really want to tweak the result and get even a better outcome out of it. So I'm going to select the glass and I've got the material ready to go. And let's see how we can tweak these attributes to improve the result. Now, just so you know, with glass and the reason that this looks so good is because if I scroll all the way down under interior, we have this translucency enabled with index of refraction. So translucency is the amount of light that goes through the surface. And uh, with index of refraction, we get the amount of light bending. So uh, light bends as it passes obviously through the object and how much is 
going to bend is based on IOR or index of refraction. We also have the absorption distance. And if you set the absorption distance to zero, thickness will not um, affect absorption color. So the light goes straight through. So make sure that you have some values in absorption distance. Otherwise, the result will look somewhat fake. And of course, we've got absorption color, which basically is responsible for tinting your glass. And we see if we really need to do that or not in a second. So with that in mind, I'm just going to scroll up and start from the top with base color i am not going to give this any color as a matter of fact you can just turn this one to black and completely remove it from your attributes roughness i am going to leave it as default because i'm about to show you a really nice trick to add so much details into your glass surface metallic we're not going to touch that opacity set to one and with specular level i'm going to ever so slightly bring the specular level down just a little bit and in case if you're wondering what specular level is in stager it basically is the strength of light reflections on the surface so you can have absolutely no reflection whatsoever or you can have a very strong specular highlights and that can get Meg that can be defined by using specular level slider and we have specular edge color and it's the color of light reflection very very powerful very useful and in fact that's a trick that I use to kind of make the look of my glass more interesting then if I click away we have I'm gonna skip normal I'm gonna skip height i'm going to go straight into anisotropy and anisotropy is going to stretch the specular highlights i'm just going to i don't know put down 0.6 and as you can see as soon as i do that it gives me a really interesting look i'm going to change the angle to something like one and you can play around with it and see how different this looks based on different anisotropy angle. But I found anisotropy very, very useful unless you're going with the, an absolutely brand new clear glass for your model. In that case, you may want to have the anisotropy set to zero. Now with anisotropy out of the way, I'm going to um, scroll down and interior obviously translucency needs to be set to one we want full uh, translucency absorption distance we want this to be 200 for sure and the index of refraction 0.8 is not too bad if you want to exaggerate the scenario and get more light bending you can uh, crank it up to a really crazy values so for example 2.1 is uh is very high but you can see it shows how thick the result is whereas if i change the value of ior to something like 1.1 we get almost the same result so i personally think high index of refraction is more exciting the look is more interesting but of course at the same time it needs to be physically accurate i highly suggest you to check the index of refraction table in real life and see for example what diamond gets as opposed to water or even clear air with no light bending so that's that we do not want to have any clear code um, whatsoever you can have a little bit of dispersion and add a little bit of dispersion inject that to your glass and the cool thing about dispersion is it, it plays around with light spectrum and gives you all sorts of cool stuff like the the result that you get in um, in let's say diamond so i can kind of crank it up just to show you the exaggerated version and if i zoom in ever so slightly you can see that dancing colors now we have a little bit of red color a little bit of cyan color into the mix which um, makes the result way more interesting but at the same time it needs to be realistic i'm just going to i don't know put 0.5 in there so we have a little bit of uh, dispersion app in there as well now 
that's all good but one thing that is missing is a little bit of detail in the roughness and that's what I like about stager because at any point of time you can go in there and add maps to any of these attributes and it gives you a really good level of customizability to change the look of the attribute now in this case what i would like to target is roughness i would like to add a little bit of uh, i don't know finger smudge to the roughness let's say so for this particular tutorial let's say i would like to apply this image to my roughness all i need to do and it's so intuitive just hold the image and drag and drop it with left mouse button onto this surface and you instantly get the result that you want and you may say all right how are we going to sort of change the position that's how you change the position that's how you change the repetition and tiling so i can kind of set that to let's say 1.2 if I kind of rotate around, you can see um, some of the areas will get that smudge and that looks gorgeous. So these are the details that you can add to your scene and get a much better looking result using the maps inside the stager and it's not just roughness you can play around with let's say anisotropy for example if you do not want to have that fogginess outside of this finger smudge let's say you want to have a clear glass for other parts of this capsule and you just want to have anisotropy where the smudginess is going on then easy you can go to anisotropy level click on that to get that window and then you can drop down the exact same map and what you get is going to be clear glass for the areas that you don't have this smudginess but then you have that really nice roughness map working for you when you clearly see how it's taking effect. So that's the, the power of adding maps to customize the attributes inside Adobe Substance Stager. I'm going to go into Anisotropy level, select on the map and remove the file because I really would like that sort of um, frosty looking glass and um, have that in conjunction with the map that I have for my Anisotropy. After this point, you can go to render and start rendering your scene. If you want PSD, then you get multi-layered file. You can have it as PNG and get the transparent result and replace the background with your custom background. You can apply presets. If you have displacement map, it's time to enable it and then specify the path and hit render. And this is it. That's the end result. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was a really simple, basic tutorial, but I got that question from one of my Patreon members and I really wanted to kind of go over that as a sign of appreciation. As usual, I really appreciate your support and your kind words. Stay safe, take care. Until the next video, see you guys later.